he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Has the Lord been good to y'all this morning? Amen. I know God been better than that to somebody. Has the Lord been good to y'all this morning? Did nobody tell you you was going to be here January the 2nd of 2022? And since you know you didn't bring yourself this far, ain't nothing wrong with taking a moment and saying, Lord, I thank you for what it is that you are doing in my life. Lord, I thank you for the food that's on my table. Lord, I thank you for the clothes that are on my back. I thank you. I may not be feeling the best, but I thank you to be able to put one foot in front of the other. I thank you to be able to open my mouth and say, Lord, I thank you for what it is that you are doing in my life. Y'all, this is a sad frog that won't pray his own part. Something wrong with the blessed child of God that won't bless the one that's given him the blessings. And we take a moment this morning to let the Lord know that we are grateful for what it is that not only what he is doing, but we thank God for what he has done. Because what he has done is our testimony of what God will do in our lives. Because how many of y'all believe that if he did it before, he's more than able to do it again in your life. And so we thank God for bringing us yet this far in our life. Lord, last year may for a lot of people have seen a little bleak at times and a little dark. But it's a good thing to know as a child of God that even though we walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, we're not going to fear any evil because God is on our side. And as long as God is for us, we worry not what, who or what is against us. So we thank God for this opportunity on this first Sunday of the new year that God has blessed us with. Y'all just think about that. 2022. That's a blessing. Many didn't get to see this time. But God gave you the grace to be able to just be here a little while longer. And if you can't thank God for anything else, just take a moment and thank God for sparing your life. You have not lived so perfectly that God had to wake you up this morning and that God had to give you strength. And when you recognize, hey man, it's in him that I live, that I move, and that I have my very existence. Everything I do, I do by the power of God. And so we thank him for new mercies that we see every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. We thank God for our being here this morning. For those of you that are here, thank God for you. And for those of you that are watching us via live stream, we're glad to have you viewing with us on this morning prayerfully. You'll follow along with us and you'll be blessed by those things that are said and done here on this morning. I want to take a moment and say Happy New Year to everybody. Amen. And I thank you for your prayers for me and my family um, as we were out in Texas. And God blessed that effort as lost souls were added to the body of Christ um, while we were there. And we thank God for that cause. And we thank God for that effort. And thank God for bringing us back home. And guess what? When I got back home, it was the same way that I left it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even the little Santa Claus, he done deflated out there in the yard. He was right there in the same place that I left him. Did nobody come by and pick up old Santa Claus? I thank God that everything was the same way that I left. Because there's going to be some problems if it wasn't. But praise God that it was as I left it. Amen. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord on this morning? I believe you came to the right place. We'll be in a very familiar passage of scripture for those of you that are, have been subscribed to Christ for any amount of time. In Matthew chapter 16, and we'll be reading verses 13 through 18 for our consideration on this morning. But I want to deal with overall a topic of this morning about something that needs to happen in our lives. This year, some things that we are going to have to make personal for us if we expect for transformation to take place in our lives. God has already told us, he told us to be not what? Conformed to this world, but to be ye what? Amen. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and that perfect and the acceptable will of the Father. So God does not want you to be the same Christian today as you were when you got baptized. 
But there ought to be some transformation that is taking place in your life. As a matter of fact, God ain't looking for the same you from Sunday to Sunday. God is looking for some transformation to take place in your life. So that's what I want to deal with overall, that topic of transformation and what we will need in our lives. And I believe we'll find that this morning in Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse number 13. He says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of his or others of his prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Now watch how he changes his name in Matthew 16 and 18. Now I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell, or your version may say Hades, talking about the same place, shall not prevail against it. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. If you would, go with me to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear wise and gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful, first of all, for you being God and being God all by yourself. And we know that beside you, there is none other. We thank you for blessing us this day with this opportunity that we are to come and feast again at the table of your word. Father, many have come for different reasons, seeking you for different things. We're praying that you will be God in their situation. Father, I ask that you would hide me behind your cross, that no flesh would take any glory in what is due to you. And Father, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and to give you the praise for doing so. It is in Jesus' name we pray that all of those that love God say amen. So we're talking about transformation. And I'm going to give you two points I'm going to go ahead and give you to you now that are important for us if we plan on having transformation in our life. The two greatest elements of transformation in your family, in your weak areas, in your life, they are contained in this verse. The two greatest elements of transformation is the church and the cross. Somebody say that with me. The church and the cross. I think that it's important for us on this first Sunday of the new year to take a new look. We need to take a look at the church, especially in this generation. This room that I'm preaching to right now should be packed on this morning. So we're saying this because I believe that's the truth. And I'm afraid that something is happening in people's mind with all of the access through internet and everything else that the church is not as important as it was a generation ago. That the church now is just something that people do when they feel like it. Or when it's convenient. I know it wasn't going to be no amens this morning. I don't, I don't think that God ever intended that the church that he wanted to build would be something that you enjoyed at the house. That the church that he was going to build would not be something that you would enjoy in your pajamas. Or it would be something that you would enjoy while you eating Frosted Flakes and Honey Nut Cheerios and you enjoying yourself. That's okay when we were afforded the opportunity. That's okay when you can do it. But he never meant for us to continue to do stuff like that. As a matter of fact, the scripture forbids us from doing that. He says, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves which is the manner of some people. Now, when he says that, he's not talking about somebody that just, just missed one Sunday. But he's talking about people that get in the habitual habit of missing Sunday after Sunday after Sunday as the manner of some is. But he says, as you see the coming of the Lord and the sign of the times, like we've seen in our nation and in the life that we live, even more now, church, we need to run to the house of God. 
And it's not just about you coming to church. It's about your children being raised in a climate and an atmosphere that says that church is important. We need to celebrate the Lord's church, y'all. We need to celebrate being members of the body of Christ, and we need to celebrate and love the house of God. Jesus shows us the power of transformation in the church when he made the connection to the church and the transformation in the life of Simon Peter. He said something in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 17. He calls him Simon. Then he calls him Simon Barjonas. But when he gets a revelation of who Christ is, he then reveals something to him and suddenly he says, I'm changing your name from Simon to Peter. Simon means weak. Like sand. That's the definition that it gives. And Peter means to be strong like a rock. The church has the power through Jesus Christ and the gospel to transform lives. The weak are able to become strong. The sand become rock solid in your life when you get into the body of Christ. And not just get into the body of Christ, but remain in the body of Christ. It can change you. It will change you if you will continually to be faithful to the Lord's church. It will become a transformation power in your family and in your life. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? All things are passed away and all things have become new. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he lists this horrible catalog of sin. He talks about drunkenness to fornication. And then he says these words, and such were some of you. He said it deep. He said, and such were some of you. But what happened? You got in the church. You got washed. You got cleansed. You got baptized. And now you are not what you used to be. If that's your testimony, tell somebody, I ain't what I used to be. I want y'all to understand that the church is not a building with a steeple and a cross on top of it. A church is not a building just because it got pews and seats and a platform on the inside. That don't mean it's a church. It's not, if it ain't changing lives, if you don't see no transformation taking place in nobody's lives, you are not being the church that Christ has called us to be. If you don't see weak people becoming strong again, people who are defeated and bound becoming victorious, and families that don't think about divorce but get the help that they need, and love each other and forgive each other and restore one another then we can be the church that God is calling us to be if that is not happening in the church it's not a church people come in with all kinds of ugly messes in their lives they come in one way but they ought to leave another way I mean, man, I don't want to go nowhere and I'm going and there's no change that is taking place in my life. That's why we don't need happy, clappy sermons all the time, making us feel good, making us feel like we are all right, making us feel like we are doing what we're supposed to do. But every now and then, we got to be brought to our true self so that we can look in the mirror and see where we are not making the mark, see where we have messed up so that God can correct those wrong things in our life and create in us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. They come in one way, but they ought to leave another way. They come in awful looking. I ain't talking about the way they look on the outside, but on the inside. Messed up by life. But they leave a beautiful bride to Christ. That's what the church ought to be doing. 
We ought not be in the business of putting down folk. We ought not be in the business of looking down on nobody unless you're looking down to pick them back up. We ought not be in the business of he say, she say, and they say, but we ought to be that city that is set high upon a hill that cannot be hidden so that somebody will see what you're doing and want to give God the glory. That's what the church ought to be doing. It take, he takes the weak and he makes them strong through the gospel church. The defeated, the gospel will make them victorious. And you ought to have an atmosphere of transformation. There's hope for your marriage. There's hope for you even in your addiction. There's hope for you even in your weakest place if you'll just get in the church. Get around God and hear the word of God and he is able to transform your life. We ought to praise God for transformation this morning. Tell somebody, welcome to the church. Welcome to the church. Here's what I found at church. I found a pardon for my past. I found power for my present. And I found a promise for my future. I'm going to say that again for somebody that didn't hear it. I have found, since I have come to Christ, I have found a pardon for my past. So ain't no use in you reminding me of what happened because I have found a pardon for my past. Not only have I found a pardon for my past, but thank God I have found power for my present. There's nothing that comes against me that I don't have the power to overcome because Christ has given me the power to be able to overcome that and it didn't just give me power but it gave me a promise that I can look forward to that if I remain faithful unto death I'll receive a crown of life that'll never fade away and that's why I believe in the church that's why I attend the church and that's why even if I wasn't a preacher, I don't care how much God blesses me. I'd have my family in the house of God. Yeah, I'd have my family in the house of God. That, and that wouldn't just be me and my wife coming by ourselves. But our children would have a choice of whether or not they want to stay at home and play the PS5 and play the Xbox and go play basketball with their friend. They would have a choice, but they would be raised up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Because all of that stuff that we are looking for can only come through the church. The church is not a last thought. It ought to be your priority. It is not second to anything. Everything you have comes because you have a connection to God. He can transform your life, church, to a place of victory. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 18 says, we know it, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make him, notice the wording, a help meet. M-E-E-T. That's not a mince print. It's not help mate, it's meet. I'll help, I'll give him or make him a help meet for him. You know what the word help meet means in the original language? You're not going to believe it. God said to Adam, I'm going to introduce you to your help meet. And in the original language, it means I'm going to introduce you to your other self. I'm going to introduce you to your other self. I'm going to introduce you to your completed self. Eve for us is a type of the church. And the church is your help me. The church will help you meet every challenge that you face in your life. 
The church will help you to beat that sin challenge. Amen, somebody. Y'all be real and say, preacher, it's been helping me, but I still struggle with it from time to time. I don't feel bad. I want you to keep on struggling. And after a while, you will be able to say just like the apostle Paul, that even if God don't take certain things out of my life, I find solace in knowing that God is going to give me the grace to be able to deal with what I'm going through. The church will help you to meet your family challenges. The church will help you raise your kids. The church will help you to deal with your teenagers. The church will help you to meet that challenge. Can I go further? I can't. The church will help you meet your financial challenges. The church will help you meet the physical challenges in life. It's a church. It will help you meet every challenge of your life. And I'm going to tell you something else. It's at the church that you get introduced to your other self. I was here. I was this. But I found a better me. Is that your testimony this morning? I found my other self. The world and the devil said I was this, but I was introduced to a church service, to the real me, to the better me, to the other me. Now I'm not addicted anymore. I'm not defeated anymore, not weak anymore, because I have found Christ. And I get introduced to my other self through the church. It's in the church that you find out you are somebody. I'm somebody in Jesus. Y'all can't tell me that I ain't. You may not, you may not think I ain't nobody, but guess what? I am somebody in Jesus. I'm going somewhere. And I'm going to do something big with my life for the glory of God. Everybody say, I am somebody. I'm going somewhere. And I'm going to do something big for God. You learned that in church. Your children will too if you bring them. Mark 4, the New King James Version of the Bible said, let us cross over to the other side. Transformation comes, number one, through the church. Secondly, it comes through the preaching and the power of the cross. And when he said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. He gave them a revelation. He said, there are some things you will never get without the cross. Church, the only way to get over the abuse that you've been through is to cross over. The only way to get over bad relationships, the only way to get over the bad deal that somebody ripped you off and you are bitter about it and you've been paying for it ever since, the only way you got to cross over. The only way is to cross over. The only thing that will get you over is the cross. The only way to be free from your sin and your shame is to cross over. That's the power of the cross to transform your life. In 2 Kings chapter 6, there's a story of a building program for the sons of the prophets. They needed to enlarge their training center. And so the Bible said they were enlarging the place. And a man had borrowed an axe. And he was out there chopping down trees. And the axe head got loose. And then as he went back to swing it and he went forward, the axe head just flew off after it got loose and it went out there into the deep raging Jordan River and it began to sink and it went down into the muck and the mire of the Jordan River. There's a real truth in that that I want to share with you this morning. Before the axe head ever got lost, it got loose. Before the axe head ever got lost, it got loose. Before anything or anybody ever becomes lost, they first of all get loose. Every once in a while, you need to ask yourself, am I getting loose in my convictions? 
Am I getting loose? Here it is in church attendance. Am I getting loose in my tithes, in my offering, and supporting the work of the Lord? Because when things start getting loose in your walk with God and with the word of God, every now and then you need to get a brand new firm grip on the Lord Jesus Christ. A brand new grip. You start to look at somebody and say, you need to get a grip this morning. And tighten your grip on God. Anytime you see people starting to get loose in their convictions, loose in their personal standards, loose with things they used to hold as a sacrifice and a way of saying, thank you, Lord. Now suddenly they get loose with it. When you get loose, it's only a matter of time before you start losing. Somebody's going to be lost when you get loose. Now watch this. And the man said, alas, master, it was borrowed. And the prophet said, where did it fall? And he said, oh, it's about right over there, right over there in that area. See, if you go out about 10 feet right in the middle of the river, that's where it went down. Of course it's gone, but that's where it went. And the Bible said that the prophet cut down a branch off the tree. Watch this. He takes part of a branch of a tree that represents the tree where Jesus shed his blood, the cross Calvary. And he throws it out there into the proximity of where the loss took place. And suddenly, I'm telling y'all, when you get in an atmosphere where the cross of Christ is being preached in the Lord's shirt and the preacher, and that's what's going down, I'm throwing tree limb. You are watching me right now, and I don't care what you have lost. I'm telling you, church, I'm throwing you the cross of Jesus. A piece of the cross. And anywhere the peace is, he said, if you can just get in the proximity, if it can just get in the vicinity of where you are, then suddenly something started. Something happened down there, y'all, in the bottom of that river. I can see that old iron axe head whose nature was to go and find the lowest places and the lowest people you can find and to get in the muck and the mire. But when it got around that stick, See, if the stick can just get in the proximity of the drug addict, he'll take the taste right out of their mouth. If the stick can get in the proximity of somebody that has a broken heart, he is able to mend that broken heart. If the stick can just get in the proximity of somebody that's lost their way, he is able to help you find your way. That old ex head say, I'm coming up out of here. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming up out of here. <laughs> I can see it shaking off the muck and the mire. And your Bible, one of the most miraculous verses of the Bible. And the ex head starts swimming. No, no, no. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. I believe the Bible. You believe the Bible? What once was sinking starts swimming. And when it said it swam, that means it was doing this. And it's coming up and it's swimming. And the catfish see it, man, I ain't never seen the axe head swim. Got the mullet down there, man, I ain't never seen nothing like that. Got the little polywogs out there, man, I ain't never seen nothing like this. What's going on? Your nature is to plunge to the depths. Your nature is to go down now with the lowest of the lowest. But now you've gone from being a sinker to being a swimmer. It's that tree that I'm talking about, y'all. It's that tree. That tree is pulling me out of my addiction. It's pulling me out of my sin. It's pulling me out of where I am. What's going on? He said, I'm going higher. I'm headed toward restoration. The power of the cross transforms even you from a sinker to a swimmer. How many of you remember when you were at the bottom? 
Some of y'all can say, preacher, that went too long ago. Oh, some of us have forgotten, I know. Do I need to pull some out and embarrass you and tell you a whole story that you told me? How many of you remember when you were stuck in the muck and the mire and you can say, I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stay within, sinking to rise no more. But, somebody said, but. The master of the sea heard my despair and cry from the waters. He lifted me. Now say, am I love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else was able to help, it was love that lifted me and I thank Jesus that while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us enough to die for us. When you couldn't get the muck and the mire off of your own life, love lifted you. And it lifted you to the place that you are right now. It comes through the cross, the mercy, the grace, the blood, the name Jesus Christ. It can lift you up, church. It can lift you up. He's made me the head, come on somebody, and not the tail. He's bringing me to a place where I'm going to be above only, come on somebody, and not beneath. My nature is no longer to plunge through the depths of the lowest people and the lowest places that I can find. I have been transformed by the renewing of the word of God. I am somebody in Jesus. I'm going somewhere for God, and I'm going to do something big. For his glory. And you are too. No matter how staying with sin, you're in the presence of Calvary. The cross. The church can lift you up. Don't take your life. I don't care how dark it is. I'm throwing the cross in your proximity. Praise God. Isn't it powerful that I'm going even right now, even though us that are here right now, and I'm glad that God has blessed us with this age that we have right now because somebody finds themselves in that same place, not even in the state of Florida, and they are watching us right now, and guess what? They are getting the same word that they need to bring them out of that place, to bring them out of that addiction, that place where they find themselves this morning. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you are going. Going through. I don't care what life has thrown at you. You are never too messed up that my God is not able to clean you up. You will never get too far out that God cannot reach out and bring you back on the inside. Don't let your situation and your troubles and your trial paint a picture of you that this is the end and all that God is able to do. You know what the word of God said. I have not seen it, have not heard. It ain't even entered into to the heart of man what God plans for doing for those that love him God church is able he is able to change your life and y'all can't see it but every time I preach the word of God I have to reach up for that stick I have to reach up for it that's why some people when I, even when I pray I say Lord hide me behind your cross because y'all got to see the stick and not the man. See, that's the problem with a lot of folk in religion today. Their eyes are on the man and not the cross. Their eyes are on a the man. They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you. But I'm looking unto Jesus. Come on, somebody, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I know that at the end of this life, I'm not going to be standing before any of y'all having to tell y'all about my life. You're going to be standing in the same line that I'm standing in. As a matter of fact, you're going to try to let me go before you because we all got to stand before God. We all got to give an account of our life. You got to stand before God. That's why you need to get in the church before it's too late. I'm reaching for the stick. Somebody here this morning need to reach up for that stick. 
You may be a long ways off from it, but guess what? If that stick can just get in the vicinity, man, I wish I could have been there, y'all, to see that thing coming up out of that water. To let them know, hey man, there's nothing that God is not able to do. And let me tell you, sometimes, and y'all can be honest and say, preacher, I did not know God was real until God made himself known in my life. I had to experience certain things in my life. It's one thing about hearing somebody else give their testimony, and you can rejoice on somebody else's testimony. But it's one thing to go through a test for yourself and to pass the test and to come out on the other side and say, I know the Lord will make a way somehow. I know that God. God will take your feet out of the miry clay. He'll set your feet on a rock to stand. He'll establish your going and your coming. He'll bless you in the city. He'll bless you in the field going out and coming in. You know, ain't no shame in being in the church. Ain't no shame in it. And I know, and I especially want to speak to my young people that are here, for those of you that are here. Don't let nobody fool you about Jesus. Don't let nobody fool you about Jesus. Because I know the biggest challenge for your life, especially if you've grown up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, after you've gotten away from home and you've gotten out there on your own, here come philosophies and here come thoughts and here come ideas that are being thrown at you. But you got to stand on the word of God. You got to develop a relationship with God for yourself. Mama ain't always going to be there to tell you what thus says the Lord. Dad ain't always going to be there to tell you what thus says the Lord the Lord. You're going to be able to have to have a faith that can stand by itself. Because can I tell you that the challenge that preachers in my generation are going to face is different from the challenge that a lot of other generations have had to face. Why do I say that? And I can say that with the utmost confidence because there is a whole generation now that does not even believe in God. Not only is there a generation of people that do not believe in God, they believe that the Bible is just like a fairy tale. It's milk, it's full of smoke and mirrors. So the challenge is now for people that already know God, making them believe that God is real. I don't know about y'all, but my God is real. Somebody say, I can feel him all in my hands, preacher. I, I can feel him all over me because I got something on the inside and it's working on the outside and it's bringing about a change in my life. And even if you don't believe, I want to tell you something. Try and see. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Try and see. You'll find out that the Lord is good. How are you going to tell me about something you ain't never tried? Oh, preacher, they got some good stuff over there. You ain't never even been over there to see if it's good or not. Church, transformation has to take place. The church has to come out of hiding. And we got to start being the church. We got to start being the church. Y'all, there are lost people that are looking for Jesus. There are people that are down and depressed and dejected even right now that are looking for Jesus. God wants to bring transformation into their life. He wants to change them. And I'm not just talking about the people that don't know God. Even for us that know God and don't live for God. God wants to make a transformation even in your life as well. God is saying, you know what? I didn't bring you through all the hell of 2021 just so you can come to 2022 and still be the same old you. Doing the same old stuff. Making the same old mistake with the same old lack of faithfulness. God wants a transformation to happen in your life and instead of allowing the news and the movies and social media and television to change your perspective and to change your life, you got to stand upon the word of God. Even if don't nobody else stand with you, you got to stand for God by yourself. You got to say, you know what? I'm going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of the water. I shall not be moved. Some people had that same testimony. 
and COVID came and they were moved. Not just COVID, but other little things. You know, I was talking with a lady, and this just goes to show you how we'll let anything cause us not to be faithful to God. I was talking to a lady the other day. She was a member of the church. And as a matter of fact, I met her while I was out in Texas, and we went out to dinner and everything. She was like, yeah, we were visiting this one congregation, and I had to stop going. I said, why? Well, two Sundays in a row, we were trying to get out the parking lot, and people wouldn't let us out. They just going before us. They trying to get to the house just like you. They, you ain't the only one left ham hocks on the stove. They trying to get back to the house just like you trying to get back to the house. They got place. They're trying to go. But you're going to allow somebody not letting you out the parking lot to stop you from coming to church. That lets me know one thing. You've been looking for a way out. You've been looking for an excuse. But can I tell y'all, none of us, none of us we have an excuse that's good enough that we can give God that's going to explain to him why we have not been faithful. You have not come into the body of Christ just to sit there and look like a what not on the stand. God has called us to do a work. What did he tell you to do? To sit there while it's day. Twiddle your thumbs while it's day. Talk about folk while it's day. Run folk down while it's day. He told you to work while it is yet day. For the night is coming. No man shall be able to do any work. Church needs to wake up. The church needs to become the church again. Us coming here together and there's no transformation taking place. You just like the Toastmasters Club. The Rotary Club. You just like any other organization that got programs. But the difference ought to be Jesus and the cross of Calvary. That ought to be the difference maker in the body of Christ. And God is calling for us, church, to be the church. Not just on Sunday morning. Anybody can be the church. Anybody can go in there in their closet and find the best thing they can find and put it on and put that cologne and that perfume on and come on in here. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. Sound like music. And God just standing there like, really? For real? Really? That you singing that now? But oh, okay, that, that's how. You, now I know how you really feel. Thank you. Monday morning on the job. You would think you was on a sailor ship. Be real with yourself. The church will never become better until you become better. Well, why we ain't doing this? Why we ain't doing that? What are you doing? Anybody can sit back and judge and gripe and moan and complain. But what are you doing? Yes, we ought to be the beacon of the Sweetwater community. But what are you doing to make that happen? Yes, everybody in the vicinity of this church ought to know the stink that we're talking about. How is that going to happen? Somebody got to go out and tell somebody what's the use in the leadership cast and vision and ain't nobody going to run with it. The church has got to be the church. A change has got to take place in the body of Christ before it's too late. We take life for granted. The opportunities that we have for granted. You, I ain't no telling how many funerals you went to last year. I went to funerals too. It wasn't for none of y'all. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. It wasn't for none of y'all. What does that let me know? God still has a purpose for your life. God still has work that he wants you to do. 
it does not mean that he's just giving you more time to play the fool. He's giving you time to get your life right. Oh, well, you know, I'm in my late 20s, my early 30s. You know, man, I got time to get right with Jesus. Can you tell you what? Young folk die just like old folk. Matter of fact, ain't no such thing no more. Everybody just leaving here. Life is a gift. Every day that you wake up, it's a gift that God has given you. Stop taking that for granted. Stop acting like God owe you something. And, and it's like you, you pleasing God by you coming to church on Sunday morning. You ain't pleasing God. You ought to come simply because God woke you up this morning. You ought to come simply because God put air in your lungs. You ought to come simply because God kept you through Monday through Saturday. Let you go to a job. Let you get a check so you can pay your bill. So you can take care of yourself. So the least you can do is come out and worship him. Just ain't ready to come back to church, but you can go to Hawaii. I, I, I just ain't ready to go to church, but you can go to parties. I, I just, I just, oh, you know, uh, the old big crap, but it didn't stop you from getting your hair did and your nails did. It didn't stop you from doing that. Ain't none of y'all losing no drive up when you go to Target and Walmart. Y'all going in there, you getting your bucket, you touching on stuff in there for two and three hours. I'm going to tell the truth, shame the devil. Some of us parted all night on New Year. Amen, lights. Man, you were still there when they turned the lights off. But it's like pulling teeth. To get you to come to church. I come over here, man. I'm going to the party night. It's going to be lit. I mean, man, it's a BYB old fad. You got to bring your own stuff. But it's going to be lit. Come on with me. We'll invite people to stuff like that. Why you can't bring nobody to church? Make this your mission this year. The amount of people that you invite to go out and party and have a good time, invite that same amount to church. Invite that same amount to church. And just like you can get them to do other stuff, you ought to be able to get that person to commit their life to Jesus Christ. But that won't be possible in so many aspects because of the image that you've already painted for that individual. I can't witness to you when you had to pick me up off the floor and carry me home last night. How am I going to encourage you in Jesus when I live my life like I don't know him? So we spend a lot of time talking about how these folk ain't right and they ain't going to heaven. They ain't doing it right. They ain't going to heaven. You ain't living right. What you think? You're going to go to heaven. We got to be real with ourselves. Work on you. Make that your mission this year. Become a better you. And if you become better, guess what? The body of Christ will become better. We got to stop making excuses. We got, man, I ain't never seen so many excuses before in my life. Well, I can't, you know, this, this and that. God is looking for people, not just seasonal employees. God is looking for somebody that's in this thing for the long haul. He's looking for somebody that's going to be devoted. You know, we say next Sunday we're having all in. But how many of us are really all in? How many of us are really devoted to the ministry? How many of us would deny going to a party so we can make it to a service? How many of us would deny certain pleasures and things that we enjoy so that we can come and get strength from the body of Christ? That lets you know how devoted you actually are to the cause of Christ. 
Transformation needs to take place in our lives. And that's only going to happen by you being in the presence of God. By you being faithful to the body of Christ. By you receiving with meekness the engrafted word of God that is able to change your life. Paul said it like this, that the gospel is God's power to save. That's the purpose, church. That's why we want people to come so that they can hear the saving message of Jesus Christ. And as a result, they'll want to become members of the body of Christ. But can we be real and say that in so many aspects, the reason why a lot of people won't ever come is because they know the real us. They know what we've done. Not saying that that's a valid excuse. But I learned somebody told me something a long time ago. They said, folk gonna talk. Just make sure there ain't no truth in what they're saying. We ought to make sure that we are the examples that we need to be for Jesus Christ. Because, as it said, the Jesus in you is the only Jesus that a lot of people are going to see. You say you Christian and you a child of God, cross wearing your neck down, folk looking at that. And folk want to see if you really about what you say you're about. And they're going to judge you by that. So we got to make sure that we're living our lives in accordance to the will of God. So that if so something is said about us, folk going to say, you must be talking about another one because I know that one. And the life that they live. And even if folk can't say that, let God be able to say that about your life. Transformation needs to take place in our lives. He can transform you even today. Even today. Just like he changed Peter on that day, he is able to change your life as well. When you, as well as Peter, come to the realization of who Jesus is, and you are willing to subscribe to him, you are willing to submit your will and your way to him, he'll come in and he'll make a change in your life. Somebody in here stand in need of change in your life, even right now, this morning. God is standing here at the door of your heart and he's knocking, come from the loathsome way of sin. I'll hide you in the blood of Jesus. Come and the Lord will take you in and he'll hide you in the blood of Jesus. Somebody need to be here in the blood of Jesus on this morning. What better day to make up in your mind to live for Jesus than the first Sunday of the new year? What better way to start off your new year than saying, you know what? I have not been living the life that I know that I'm supposed to live, so I'm going to go and I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ. Maybe even here today and you feel like you've had a sense of religion, you had a sense of God and you have not come into the full knowledge of the gospel and who Jesus is, God is welcoming you on this morning. God is not desiring that any should perish, but he wants all men, women, boys, and girls to come to repentance. Is that you this morning? If that's you, you can come to Jesus by hearing his word. What, what do I need to hear? That he lived and he died on the third day. He rose again with all power in his hand. After you've heard the word, you need to believe what it is that you have heard. Repent of your sins. Confess Christ as your Savior. Be buried with him in baptism. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. For those of you that are here and you're already members of the body of Christ. And you, even at this moment, stand in need of transformation in your life. Let's make this year different than last year. Don't leave here knowing that your relationship is not right with God. You need to come down and let us pray for you. For those of you that are struggling with things in your life, maybe you have things that you've been holding in and it's just about to burn you up on the inside. You feel like you ain't got nobody to talk to, to lean on. Come, let us pray for you on this morning. The effectual prayers of the righteous church, they availeth much. You are going to need some prayer every now and then. Can I say it again? You are going to need some prayer every now and again. Every single one of us, we stand in the need of prayer. And if you desire that opportunity on this morning, don't let it pass you by.
come to Jesus even now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained with, for sinking to rest no more.